There's something wrong with my thing. Uh, so. Which, <laughs> which one? I mean, you know, like, let's be honest here, Leon. If we want to nail down exactly what thing and what's wrong with it, we might be here for a little while. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. I am joined by Johnny Maloney and Austin Yorsky. Well, Austin, uh, tell us what's going on, and I'll try to remain here. Wait, what's going on with what? With, with you and your thing? No, no, no. With with your friend slash colleague slash critic of our <laughs> Okay, so uh, last week I talked about someone sent us a review of my of our podcast. Okay, they didn't send us a review of yeah. the podcast. No. He texted you a review of the podcast. So <laughs> I'm going to read this now. Um, it starts off pretty well. It says, <clears throat> so I liked your podcast. You guys don't speak over each other. You have good chemistry. It's just a couple of guys fucking around talking about current pop culture events. So that's pretty good so far, right? Like, that sounds positive. It, it's, that's, that starts pretty amicably. <laughs> and then it has what we in the poetry field call a volta, <laughs> where it, it takes a right turn. Um, I can see a lonely person with no friends liking it. The humor isn't very evolved or sophisticated, but I laughed anyway, even when I knew better. A lot of the jokes are surface level and common knowledge. That, that's Guys. it? That's, yeah. That's the whole review? <laughs> well, it was a text. That's a pretty long-ass text. I, the I humor, okay. So. The humor level. We're not writing this stuff. We're not like we're not like the uh, the writers of the Oscars where we're like stuck in a room and we're like, okay, what's the best pun? And then we, we like, hammer out eight different jokes and we pick the best one. We're just, we are three guys fucking about. And if we happen to say anything funny, it's completely by accident. I, <laughs> my, my teleprompter only works, like, 10% of the time. My, writing, like my this... writing team is stumped. They don't know how to deal with this because I talk faster than they can pump stuff out. Before this episode's over, we need to decide what is unilaterally the best pun. Because now I have to know. I, I have one. <laughs> Is he, I'm sorry, is he, is he getting the best pun right now? Or no, he, so, had, he had to rip out a post like, I'm sorry, it's not like you were opening a safe or something and just like, <laughs> wait, I have it. It's too dangerous for mortal eyes. He has to keep it in a, in a vault. Yeah, yeah. It's, I it's don't a, know. It's, I, a, I, it's a killing word. Um, no, um, the, best, the best pun I've ever uh, said was by accident. Like all all the things I say, does this count as a pun? Yeah, because one time one time I um I said a thing and I said that it was a pun and someone says that doesn't count as a pun that's just wordplay. So I wasn't sure. The best pun I've ever said um, spontaneously was when I was watching Krull with some friends. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, um, there's a cyclops in the, in Krull. And every time the Cyclops would pop up, I'd come up with a bunch of eye puns. Like, um, I mean, <laughs> like, oh, um, God, what was it? I, first I said, he has an eye for him. And then everyone says, oh, it's terrible. And I said, yeah, you're right. I've never heard a cornea line than that. And then I said, I'm sorry, it's just that an eye lends itself to puns. And everyone told me to shut up. <laughs> and they said, do you have one more? And I said, yes, but I'm saving it. They uh, basically, all, later in the movie, you find that the, the princess lady is stuck inside what appears to be a giant eye. And, <laughs> of course, I had to do something with that. And then um, the beast, who took a human form, said, um, what did he say? He said, and you will be my queen. And then I said, but don't call me king. Rather, I will be the... I, Atola. Oh, word funk, where we tell you about jokes we made in the past, and that's the context. <laughs> um, the, best joke, the best joke I've ever written in general was for Heart of Gaming, and oddly enough, it's a clean joke. Uh, the best joke I've ever written was, um, I said, uh, what was it? Oh, I was playing a Left Behind game, and I said, uh, in modern times, I find it difficult to believe in God and heaven, or as I call them, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. That's the best <laughs> joke I've ever written. <laughs> well, 
like that. Thank you. Um, that's all I got. Uh, I, think, I think my my favorite pun, my favorite pun may very well be, um, I was playing baseball the other day, and suddenly in the middle of the game, I realized I forgot how to catch, and then it hit me. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Leon, you're going to edit all this out, right? This is no, all going no. in the oh trash. Oh, my God. I'm keeping all of this in, and then I'm going to play it twice. Um, <laughs> you should just do a fucking disco remake. Just going to copy and paste it. Um, okay, so whoever this, who is this person? Do, do you have strong uh, personal feelings for this person? You said, <laughs> are, you, are you asking me to cut off ties with the person who said our podcast is no, with people no, with no, no friends? <laughs> I, just, I have things to say to this person, and I want to know where the line is. Because if, uh, you're, if he's important to you, I'll be nice, but if he's just some douchebag, then I'll, I'll, like, let loose. I don't want to be uh, a jerk, is all. Okay, A, I'm dating her, and B, it's way funnier. <laughs> <laughs> it's way funnier if you just go off, so just no, don't hold back. now. <laughs> you have to. Like some, I thought this was someone, like, at your work. <laughs> or Please. Oh my god. Uh, so, um, <laughs> that's all I got for that. No, damn you, Leon, you have to. You have to do it. How dare you? How dare you insult this completely bullshit recording <laughs> that we do every week? This basically just a conversation among three friends that we pretend is a podcast. How dare you? Uh, but no, that's all I got. Uh huh. I'm gonna be suspicious that you had some sick ass burns that you're saving now. <laughs> Where's your podcast, lady? What, what have you done exactly? So, <laughs> burn there. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I was it. just I was just felt that criticizing us was sort of like low hanging fruit. Yeah. Like like more so than any of the jokes that we've made in the podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> I, try, I like to think that on, like, the channel Awesome Spectrum, we fly under the radar enough. Like, we can't get in trouble for being shit or stupid or offensive because not enough people know that we exist. Well, maybe you know? you guys. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm Leon Renegade Cut Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Thomas. Have you seen Attack of the Trek? <laughs> uh, not a whole lot of people have, actually. Uh, <laughs> about, about, half, about half of the people who watch Renegade Cut um, by the numbers, watch Attack of the Trek. And about, and about half of the people who watch Attack of the Trek listen to Word Fuck. Wait, wait, I didn't think Star Trek would be a more popular topic. Everyone loves Star Trek. You would, th I, see, that's the thing. When I started developing Attack of the Trek, I was like, you know, it's weird because Channel Awesome doesn't even have a Star Trek show, and they have like eight Doctor Who shows, so why don't, why don't I make a Star Trek show? I'm getting tired of making Renegade Cut, because at the time I was. Um, so I said, I'm going to make a Star Trek show, and that'll be my main thing. And it was not popular, and it's still not. Uh, but but um, it's back, and I'm going to do one of them. <laughs> anyway. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? The next episode is going to be uh, Best of Both Worlds, Parts 1 and 2, because uh, why not? Okay. It's funny that you joke about nobody listening to this, because when – uh, she found out I was on a podcast. She yeah. was, what episode should I listen to? I was like, oh, my God, don't. Please, please <laughs> don't. It's just for me, please. And it, 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 it fell on deaf ears. Oh. What episode did, so, you, did she listen to? Just to say I know. A couple. I think the um, the penis one and the eugenics one. Well, so, that, that really narrows it down there, Austin. <laughs> the, penis one is our, the penis one is our best one, even though it's one of our least uh, viewed ones. <laughs> Oh, well. I wonder if people saw the title of the most phallic episode and knew exactly what it was. Because, I mean, mm. that's not exactly a popular topic. <laughs> it no should one... be. Um, so... <laughs> no one speaks that out. Okay. All right. Um, we've talked about some things, and now we have to talk about the main thrust of the show, and that is uh, TV shows. Because apparently we're in, like, a new golden age of television where basically, unless the show is great, there's no reason to uh, to watch it because there's just too much. It, there, the 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 landscape is too good to watch Once Upon a Time, basically. <laughs> um, and yet I do. But I, I as I watch it, I recognize that this is such a TV show. Whereas everything else I watch, like Hannibal and True Detective, 
and uh, Fargo, which I just started watching, they're just like on a whole different level. So um, you guys started watching some new shows uh, that came out recently. Um, I have not. So, but I would like to hear your thoughts on uh, them. Austin, you have some thoughts, I think. Oh, okay. Just throwing it to me, huh? Well, I, yeah, I was yeah. hoping. You're, you're in the hot seat this time because apparently your girlfriend uh, hates us. So you have to, you have to, you have to take on more responsibilities of the show to, uh, to make it better so that she likes us. It is also um, your responsibility to notify us when she first tells you that she thinks that we're a bad influence on you. Yeah, that's when you have to cut the cord. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm joking. I'm joking, Austin's girlfriend. Um, Good one. The great, the great thing uh, about uh, this Austin is now uh, your girlfriend is an unseen character on our show, like Maris from Frasier or Vera, or Vera from uh, Cheers. We have two. We already have Sean. Yeah, Sean. Uh, we just kind of talk around him somehow. <laughs> um, okay, but anyway, uh, TV shows hit it. Oh, okay. Well, I was actually hoping for your guidance on this, Leon, because you're a comics book guy, but you don't, you haven't watched it, so I don't know how you're going to yeah. contribute, um, lazy fuck. But Netflix yeah. just dropped the first season of Marvel's Daredevil, yeah, 18 I, episodes. I loved the Ed Brubaker's Daredevil comics, but uh, I haven't gotten around to watching the show because I'm mired in uh, another show that I'll talk about. What, have, so you've seen Daredevil. What do you think of it? Because all I hear is good things. Did you know I that think, he's blind? I did. <laughs> have you watched it, Johnny? Oh, yeah, top to bottom. Oh, I've only seen the first seven episodes, so don't spoil it. It's really, really good. I joked on Twitter that it's like Better Call Saul meets The Raid Redemption because it's like legal, <laughs> legal drama, legal drama, legal drama, bone-crunching fight scene. Legal drama, legal drama. Oh, God, there's blood everywhere. The bones. Oh, no. <laughs> like, it's... It's really, really good, but I wasn't expecting it to be so fucking brutal. Christ. That that, um, that fight scene at the end of episode two? Yeah, Cutman, the, the second episode, ends with a, like a one-shot fight scene in a hallway. It's, it kind of reminds me of Old Boy without the hammer, but he just yeah. fucking ruins like eight people in one shot. It's really, really good. But the whole show is wonderfully choreographed. It's well-acted. It's atmospheric. It's, I mean, it has some, like, comic booky things you just have to accept, like the premise, basically, and some other goofiness. But, he has, um... Yes, magic eye powers. You know, you know, yeah. you know, when you lose one of your senses, you also get a red costume. That is how <laughs> that works. Well, they actually, you know, to tell you the truth, I kind of found the way that they addressed Daredevil's, like, second sight thing actually being pretty, pretty impressive. Okay. Like, they, they pay it minimal attention, you know, and they, they don't result to these, like, super stupid CGI cutscenes where you see, like, <laughs> raindrops bouncing off someone's face, and he's like, my god, you're beautiful. <laughs> you know, they're just sort of like, they just, they just have these moments where he's like, like, in, uh, in the same episode, in the second episode, there's a moment where he smells a man, like, three fours down on a, in an apartment, in the apartment building that he's in. And and it's just kind of like they have these small moments where you're like, oh, okay, so he's actually capable of of that. That's weird. I like how all the characters call him out on it too. They're like, what? Well, you can't do that. That's stupid. Stop it. Yeah, and he's like, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, as far as Marvel stuff goes, it distinguishes itself, itself pretty quickly by having much lower stakes. Like when you're watching Thor or you know Captain America or something, like the world's gonna blow up. Oh God. There's infinity stones, evil aliens are coming. But he's just kicking the shit out of criminals. Like, it's it's much more personal and, like, low-key, which I think uh, kind of differentiates itself. Like, they mention, like, the events of the Avengers and stuff in the background, but it doesn't feel like it's trying to pimp the Marvel Cinematic Universe so much as just being its own good show. All right. What is, uh, how does it look? Because that's become a big thing for me watching TV, because the less TV looks like TV, the more I seem to like it. I, I, I feel like I would, I would like to describe it as kind of like, um, <clears throat> it, it, like all of the, all of the legal, the legal drama, it sort of reminds me of like really cheap Asian horror movies. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
with, like, really, really sparse sets and, like, kind of a sickly yellow light, you know, and just this, like, it looks like everybody's about to throw up a little bit. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's you, you kind of, like, they it, they seem to do their best to sort of, like, tinge anything that's happening in, in sort of, like, you know, the legal system or at the police station or something like that with this sort of, like, yeah, the system is kind of sick sort of feeling. Like, it, it, it doesn't, none of the official stuff really looks too terribly healthy. <clears throat> Can we just take a moment to address how the, the whole subplot, like, the running thing where the cops keep executing people? Uh, is really uncomfortable in light of recent events. Does that I, know, a I, lot? I know, like how how weirdly prophetic is it that like this shit was being written, you know, like some time ago. I mean, they obviously didn't write it like you know last month. They would yeah. have written this shit like a, a couple of years ago, and then filmed it, you know, uh, over over like the last. Uh, well, not not over the last, because then you've got to edit it together. I mean, this is like thirteen episodes that all come out in one shove, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah. given given the the production values, because it it obviously they've they've paid through the wazoo for fight choreography and stuntmen, and uh, and and the right equipment and and all that jazz. Like, yeah, I mean, this this stuff must have been filmed like a year and a half, two years ago, or something like that. That uh, all that all that seems kind of weirdly clairvoyant. Right. Yeah, it, it hit me. But that's that's a the running theme throughout the show is that the the cops get get a chance to kill you, they're gonna do it. <laughs> like it's it's I don't know. I like the I like the show a lot, but it is darker. I think is one of the point I'm trying to make. The lighting, the acting, the, the plot, everything. It's it's no Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, I, like um, coming off Austin. I would say that it's probably more like um, a really uh, like a, a, a Goodfellas that has no likable characters in it. <laughs> you don't like Foggy? Uh, like okay, all right, Foggy, but but that, he's not part of the Goodfellas part. It's like you know that that would be like I don't know where I go from Goodfellas to like I don't know the second half of Law and Order. Mm. Meets basically like a ninja movie. <laughs> well, well I, I'm what, definitely going to watch it. I just uh, there's just there's just too so much right now. Yeah, there's so much. <laughs> yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you a specific question about like comic books because I've seen the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck, and I've Be- seen like before we move on. I just want to give big shout outs to Vincent D'Onofrio. Ah, that's where I was going. You fuck. <laughs> All right, then you keep you keep going then. Oh, okay. I've seen the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck, and I've uh, watched like some Spider-Man cartoons, which wherein the Kingpin is a villain. Yeah. I'm curious about his portrayal in the comics because in the things I've seen, he's kind of just a fat guy with a uh, like a stick that shoots lasers. But in the Netflix Daredevil, he's like has this like social anxiety, and he's like really he actually reminds me a lot of the villain from Vento Oreo, which is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Five. He's like a crime boss who has a, like a psychotic need for no one to know his identity. I'm sure that's a co- coincidence, but is that how he's in the comics? Because he's like not like that in anything else I've ever seen. King Kingpin. King Kingpin. Uh, well, first of all, I have no idea what kind of laser stick you've seen. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't I don't recall that in any media I've ever seen Kingpin in. But um, no, no Wilson Fisk, he he's a he's a crime he's a crime boss, and he it's hard to explain. But in terms of him being a fat guy, he's not supposed to be fat. The, the, that's like the running joke. Where <laughs> it's like secret muscles. No, yeah. no, no, right? He's act, it's all completely muscle. Everyone just thinks he's fat, and then when they fight him, he just crushes them. Uh, <laughs> Kingpin thinks – let me uh, tell you a story about that. Kingpin thought that he could beat up Spider-Man because he's just – he's like, I'm, I'm the Kingpin. And he has this very uh, inflated uh, sense of what he can do. Just And, I mean, he is a huge dude, but Spider-Man just schools him and, like, threatens to kill him in front of a bunch of inmates. But instead, he just humiliates him and makes makes him look like an asshole. Did he pants him? Did he pants him? <laughs> Tell me he pants him. <laughs> no. It was actually great. Um, it was this really cool scene where uh, Spider-Man, um, he's in he's in prison with uh, the Kingpin, and he, and he says, Spider-Man would never kill you. And then he takes off his shirt that has the spider symbol on it, and then goes after him like he's going to murder the shit out of him. 
and then he doesn't, but he looks, but he makes Kingpin look like a tool in front of everyone, and then he loses all his prison cred. Um, Kingpin is a very uh, vain person in the comics. Uh, he there there is this one comic where it shows him. He he, find, he he finds a good woman, and he, he looks like he's going to turn over a new leaf, and then shit gets real, and then he's like, fuck it. So there's always this sense of the kingpin where he's not evil in the, you know, mustache twirling kind of way. He's just a crime boss, and he thinks this is more or less the way of the world, and he's just on top. And he, people generally don't know that he's the kingpin. They just think he's a philanthropist. Yeah, that's. I mean, maybe Johnny knows more because he's seen more of the episodes. But the way they play it, the, I'm gonna butcher his name, Vincent D'Onofrio or whatever. He plays him like he has some kind of like disorder or something. Like he he is really uncomfortable around people. He doesn't like being in public, and he has like a like a really weird fixation on being anonymous. Like he doesn't like walk around like being intimidating in public or anything. Like I've seen him before. That's not a. But, that's not a. a the way it is in comics, but I, I'm no. fine with a new interpretation. They, uh, you know, and I, I'm, I, I hope I'm not blowing anything by saying this, but they, they find a way to work his, his like public appearance into the show. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 in all senses, it, it, it does kind of become like, oh, I see. All right, that's how they're setting this whole situation up. Because I mean, for for much of the show, too, Daredevil isn't really Daredevil. Uh, they they call him Black Mask for much of the show, because at at the very beginning, he just like he he gets his ninja uniform in the mail, and then I guess because he's blind, <clears throat> he puts the uh, he puts the mask on a little weird, you know, over his eyes. Instead of like both of them, so nobody was nobody must ever have said to him, no, 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 a ninja wears it like this, um, which I guess is okay because you know, I mean, if you're planning on becoming like an actual ninja and somebody is going to be like, allow me to correct you on how a ninja does something, you should probably just kick their ass anyways. Um, but uh, so yeah, you know, it's it's kind of about how like uh, they start uh, when when the public becomes aware of him, they start calling him the Devil of Hell's Kitchen, and you're like, oh okay, that's how they're gonna do it, you know. Uh, so yeah, they they kind of work their way up there. It 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 comes to, but I I really did like how uh, how they led into it. I think that the the D'Onofrio's. Uh, portrayal of, of the kingpin is probably one of the more interesting um <clears throat> bad guys like you know the the whole like civilized bad guy the uh the fucking like you know the the epicurean villain ah uh, yes i would kill you but right now i'm eating caviar so instead let us talk <clears throat> no they uh a, the th- some of the things that they do with his character is 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 pretty intense, pretty pretty awesome. Like, I, I think the series is really worth it just for seeing his characterization. It's um, a, a really, it, it's really fresh. It's really good. That's cool. In yeah. fact, his, his performance, for me, is what elevates it to a show that I'm like, wow, this is really good. His performance and the fight choreography, the fight choreography just knocks my socks off. I love it. All right. I like that Daredevil. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I like that Daredevil is not Daredevil right away. Whereas in the uh, the Ben Affleck film, he just shows up and he's like Flamin' D's. This is who I am, everyone. <laughs> yeah, and the journalist is already like, "Was this the Daredevil?" And they're like, "What are you talking about? The Daredevil doesn't exist." And he's like, Whoomph! "Oh, oh no. yeah." <laughs> Maybe David Duke was here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I I definitely have to watch this show. Further, um, furthermore than that, I really disliked the um, uh, when we're while we're talking about the Ben Affleck Daredevil, <laughs> god damn it, that they couldn't seem to figure out that he was just a dude. They had him like jumping off buildings and like you know holding on to grappling hooks that it would have torn like anybody's socket. Yeah, he's not Spider Man. No, no, you know, like, like right at the very beginning of the, of the Ben Affleck Daredevil, it's like he jumps off a building, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> yeah, the, the Daredevil in the show gets spends more time getting his fucking ass handed to him. He's covered in bruises by the end of every episode. He gets his ass beat down, and it's fantastic because every time he walks into the law office, and he's got this huge goddamn shiner. He's <laughs> like, ah. Uh, 
didn't see the stairs. <laughs> and they're all like, oh, Matt. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we can discuss about this show forever, but we should move on. Yeah, um, I want to talk about it. We're probably going to talk about it later when you both finish yeah. <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, um, I, I want to briefly talk about uh, Bates Motel because it came back on the air. Uh, I uh, binge-watched the second season uh, over the past couple days because I had to, because the third season came on and I had gotten behind. Uh, you, sorry, just as a quick aside, yeah. that fucking that fucking building is in my area. Really? I can go and visit the fucking Bates Motel. That's cool. And it's it's really creepy because they've got it like walled and fenced up as it's like you know a set, right? Right. But it, it, when you go there and there's like nobody there and it's just like fences and it's like no trespassing, you're like, yeah, that looks like the scene of some pretty grisly ass murders. <laughs> okay, well, that's cool. Um. Sadly, I am very, very far away from it, so I can't see any of the incest uh, from where I'm standing. But no, that's what the show is, and, that's, and I'm, I'm sorry. But that's what, like, the first season is just, like, countdown to incest. And, 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 then, and then the second season is like, is it going to happen this season? And, it's, and it's, it's awful, but you it's the only show where you could look at a, a mother and her son and be like, that's my ship. Um <laughs> Uh, and it's 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 terrible, but it's you have to kind of watch it. Just well, you know it's coming because they're basing a lot of this off of uh, the book and the film, and you just have to expect that eventually that's going to happen. And without getting into a lot of spoilers, I just started watching season three, and although they're not fucking or anything, um, says someone, you, <laughs> someone um, they do occasionally sleep in the same bed in a mother and son kind of way. But he's 18 now. Uh, so, so so finally, Dylan, who is his brother, walks up to uh, Norm, Norma Bates, the mother, and, and says, don't you think that's kind of weird? And I just sat there like, yes, God. So he's like speaking for the audience. Um, so yeah, they're finally like, it's not like subtle anymore where they you see that they, they hug for a little too long uh, or dance together. Uh, in the first two seasons. Now Dylan, sort of speaking for the audience, is saying, this is weird, um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> there's more to the show than the, than, um, the potential incest, though, I should mention. Um, Leon, yeah. do, you think that, do you think that this the, um, Game of Thrones has had some kind of influence on that? Because I've noticed, like, there's incest is a big part of, obviously, the events that kick off Game of Thrones. And then I watched Boardwalk Empire, which also has a weird incestuous relationship between Jimmy and his mom. And now this show, is this, is this like, is incest the new black? What is going on? <laughs> I, I, God, I wish I could make that the title. Um, but no. Um, no, I, I don't know if, if it, I mean, there that's been in, in literature and, and film and, and television for quite a while. I mean, like if Chinatown and everything. But if there is, it's the kind of thing that maybe because big Game of Thrones, yeah. Game of Thrones is so <laughs> popular that now, even though it's still the thing you never do, it's not it's not the thing you never talk about anymore. You can apparently well, that, talk about it. It's the only thing that shocks audiences. Like we've seen all the violence. There's no way you can mangle a human body that like people haven't already seen on TV. Like there's no swear words you can say. Like you can say fuck, you can say cunt. Like no one cares anymore. Okay. So you have to. If you want to shock people, you have to do something, like, outrageous. And that's, like, maybe necrophilia is the final step. But I feel like we're not quite there yet. Well, maybe at the in the final season of Bates Motel, after the mother dies, and after they've done <gasps> fucking, he, 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 he combines the two things. Um, but no, uh, look, Bates Motel... What manner of grim future is this that I have just walked into? Uh, so... So look, um, Bates Hotel. It's not a great show. Um, it's just it's just pretty good. It's good enough that I would keep watching it, and I enjoy it. There's there's just aspects of the show that I enjoy. Uh, um, I, I'm gonna butcher his name, but Nestor Carbonell. Um, I'm, I'm I know I'm saying it wrong. Um, is in it. He was um, one of the characters on Lost, and he was he he was the mayor in the Dark Knight movies. And he's in this, and he's just awesome as the sheriff 
who understands that weed basically makes this town run. So he has to kind of deal with that, but also trying to maintain some order of justice. And he's great. If the show had been about just about him, that would be cool. But mostly it's about this weird ticking clock that we're all kind of sort of watching uh, until Norman Bates completely loses his shit. Um, and uh, it's not it's not bad. Vera Farmiga is a really good actress, so she kind of uh, pulls it together. Um, I, I, I would recommend trying it. It's not, like I said, television right now is so great that you almost kind of want to avoid just good shows, but uh, maybe some people will like it a little more than myself. I just think it's good. That's that's it's not it's not Game of Thrones good. <laughs> Speaking of Game of Thrones, did you watch the new season premiere? Yeah, but that's the thing. This, this season and even and probably next season as well are going to diverge from the books so much because they're out of stuff. And with again, without going into um, any spoilers, my wife, who has read it, all the books so far, has already noticed a bunch of shit is different. So mm-hmm. it's it's just the, the books are no longer the spoilers. Johnny, That's I it. didn't I didn't watch <laughs> I didn't watch it. Oh, okay. That's it. Then. I, I mean, it's on my PVR right now, but uh, I haven't I haven't gotten to it yet. So is anyone? I started thinking about this earlier today. Um, cause I was thinking about shows that I've watched over the years or movie that I, movies that I've watched over the years where <laughs> virtually the entire cast are just irredeemable bastards and how that, how that can influence whether or not I enjoy something because I tried to watch, um, House of Cards and the reason that I found it so difficult to get into besides the fact that it's just gross is the fact that I couldn't, I couldn't get behind anyone. And that's not always the case. You know, I could find, I find Dexter's uh, actions morally reprehensible, regardless of the fact that he's killing other killers. And yet for the first few seasons, I really enjoyed that show. So, so there just has to be, there needs to be something. And I started thinking about uh, Game of Thrones and I'm like, who's even a good guy on this show? And I understand. Hodor. I know, Hodor. Yeah. Maybe Hodor. I mean, every, I mean, everyone, look, I, I firmly believe that everything's kind of shades of gray in the world. I, I, I you know, but I, but I kind of want semi, uh, some semi heroes in my medieval fantasy. And it just seems like everyone's a shit. I mean, I mean we were spo- we we're supposed to get behind Tyrion. They sort of like positioned him to be like the star of the show, at least by the second season. Um, mm-hmm. That was like the surprise hit character, I suppose. And he just, you know, I guess spoilers for last season if you haven't watched yet, but he pretty much just murders a, a defenseless woman. Um, and, yeah, she testified against him and lied, but that doesn't give you a free kill. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, like, oh, okay, um, someone wronged you, so you're allowed to murder them. You can make the – I mean, you can make the argument that Tywin Lannister – is just the worst shit, and it's still murder. But I could kind of let almost let that slide. But she basically, you, you dumped her, and she said some shit about you that's not true, and that's not cool, especially when life is at stake. But it doesn't mean you get to do that. So, and and they address it in the the again. The, I, this isn't a spoiler. It's just this is aired. Um, the first episode of uh, the new season, um, Viserys, uh, this, I, I can't always say his, his name, name wrong, Viserys says, um, you're a compassionate man. And Tyrion looks at him and he's like, I just killed my girlfriend. And he says, well, you're not perfect. And I guess that's how we're supposed to view most of these characters. They're not perfect. And that's fine, but besides Tommen and maybe Brienne, everyone's kind of a shit in some way. I think you're supposed to root for the Starks, Ned, and then Rob, and now John. That's but, how I understood the morality of it, at least. Yeah, but Ned pretty much got uh, his head cut off in the first season, and Rob shortly thereafter. And John, John, yeah, I guess John is the hero of the show, but I, I, I don't want that to be because he's not 
one of my favorite characters. <laughs> um, I swear, I'm reading the books too, and every time I, uh, yeah, I turn the page and it says John, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I have to slog through this John Snow chapter to get to a Catelyn chapter or really any other chapter that I prefer. Um, That's funny. I, I never liked the Catelyn chapters. Really, I think yeah. I think she's neat, but especially since the Catelyn chapters also have Brienne, and she's my favorite character in all of this. I, I you know, I'm, I'm pretty okay with it, now, especially now that Brienne showed up. Um, Can we just take some time to acknowledge Leon that you're like, oh yeah, I love Bates Motel and Game of Thrones, which have sickening violence and incest, but House of Cards is too gross because they had a, like a weird sex scene once. <laughs> look, look. Like, first of all, first, okay, first of all. They didn't have a weird sex scene once. <laughs> so that's so let's let's get real. Second of all, I think the reason that uh House of Cards grossed me out more than uh other shows is because I it, it feel I don't wouldn't say it feels real because it doesn't. But it I I read about politics too much that it's hard for me to get behind a filthy politician, <laughs> basically, when all I do is read about like Politicians who frankly piss me off, so I, I don't I don't want to root for Frank Underwood. And while I, while it may seem that like even though they don't necessarily based on the true story, they don't really make a- absolute pretenses at it being fantasy. So is that like? I suppose has like a veneer of verisimilitude, where yeah. it's like you could believe it's real, but like dragons and Game of Thrones and like serial killing weirdos or like have a little bit of fantasy in them whenever so. whenever something awful happens in game of thrones um i always think well it was a different time <laughs> 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 it's like like especially it's 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 said in the show but it's emphasized even more in the book that daenerys targaryen is like 12 or 13 when she gets married off to a full-grown man who Although, you know, he says, oh, you're, you're my son Moonstar and all that shit. He's still a fully grown man who's fucking a child. And I, and I say this, uh, you know, because I don't like Call Jorgo, p- partly for that reason. Um, and I always get like, it's a different time. And I'm like, yeah, okay. It's st- there's just a line, though. But a lot of the stuff in the show, it's like, yeah, um, you know, these people, you know, they are, they're quick to anger, but maybe the justice system hasn't been, you know, set, set, uh, in such a way that we have now. So, and, and, but, so I can kind of let a lot slide with that show, but something about watching a political drama where everyone's just a remorseless bastard, just, it's too, it's too close, I wouldn't say too close to home, because I'm certainly not involved in politics, but it's too close to reality, I guess, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I understand you. I don't agree with you. <laughs> no, you. look, look, here's the thing. I bet if I watched House of Cards front to back, season one through the end of season three, I'd probably like it well enough. I, I, I think that. But my introduction to the show was terrible. It was the worst scene I could have possibly seen. And I was like, nope, done. Uh, sometimes there's just one scene that I attach to a show that can make that can ruin the whole thing for me. Uh, the same thing happened to me with Louis. Uh, I loved the first few seasons. And then they had one scene that was too much for me. And I said, I'm done with this show forever. Uh, so, I don't hey, know. what scene is that? Can't just leave us in suspense. Oh, have you seen Louis? Yeah. Oh, that would have to be the scene where uh, Louis gets a little too rapey with a woman. Oh, uh, yeah, I feel you. Yeah, that was. Uh, I thought I, I was. I watched it. I'm like, did that even happen? Why would they do that on this show? And then I looked it up, and apparently, every a lot of other people had serious problems with it too. And there was an article called um, "the the moment Louis stopped being funny." And I was like, yes, for me too. That's exactly how I felt. I, I just I can't watch that show anymore. It's uh it's tainted now. Um even if it gets really good later and, and there's an apology episode, I I just <laughs> I just can't if the whole episode is just Louie looking into the camera and like, I don't know what I was thinking. Um I'm still not gonna watch that show. I'm it's like a relationship. We're divorced now, Louie, and it doesn't matter if you apologize afterwards. We're living in different rooms now, so. 
<laughs> oh, poor Louie. It's over. Uh, he does not care what I think, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> He seems like a pretty down to earth dude. I feel like he might find this podcast and send you an email asking if you guys can like meet up for coffee sometime or something. There's no way. Oh, oh, someone just emailed me like right before the show, or I saw it right before the show, asking. It's really long and detailed and and clearly very well thought out, and I I, I like that. But it's about the movie The Zero Theorem. And this person wants my uh, insights into it, but I haven't seen it. So they made this huge post to me, which was really uh, nice. And I I like when people, you know, uh, do that, but I have no way to respond to it. So I'm going to have to let them know that I haven't seen it yet. That was Johnny, right, who talked about the Zero Theorem on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm almost almost positive it was not Johnny who who emailed me. Um, (laughs) No, I meant that it was (laughs) me. No, I'm I'm playing. But, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going off on tangents. Any other uh, shows we want to talk about before? Uh, but there's a video game story we should probably discuss. Yeah, well, I mean, we're out of time. It sucks because I wanted to get you guys' opinions on some other stuff. I know I said I thought The Walking Dead was improving going into this last season. You guys disagreed? And no, no, just... no. I, uh, the last few episodes I really liked, but I have one problem with it, um, and that's this... This I, I don't know if it's just the characters who feel this way or or like and they're showing that they have they the world has ruined their perceptions or if it's genuinely the writers who believe this way, but they they get into this new town and they're like we have to take it over we're taking it from these people and they don't understand they're just children who listen to stories we have you know we have to we have to execute everyone who, who does anything uh, wrong <laughs> we're not there's no other way and i'm like there probably is <laughs> there, <laughs> there probably yeah. is some in between where you can uh it's it, it's this weird like um safety versus, you know, human rights kind of thing that has always yeah. been a, a, a battle between two sides over the course of history. And yet, on this last few episodes of this show where they get into this new town and they're like, everything's okay now. We're making sure everything's cool. And then they get there and like, these people aren't safe. It's time for executions. <laughs> 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 and, and, every, and the weird thing is, like, all of the uh, the main characters – are totally behind him on this. There's no. very, there's very little dissent. There's, there's I, almost. It's set, up, it's set up as like an ideological battle between Rick and Michonne, and then the the events of the final episode kind of tip it to the one side. But I mean, yes, most of the group is like clearly Michonne? Carol. Yeah, Carol but, is out for fucking blood. But yeah, oh god, fucking Carol. Um, <laughs> the, the thing is, Michonne, like, yeah, she's she's briefly against. Uh, Rick's thoughts on it, but at, towards the end, she talks to him, and she's like, I'm with you, no matter what. And he's like, okay, so, really not. She's, <laughs> she, 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 so, you're actually, you're actually, it's like, you're just gonna do what he wants. And, someone does something awful, and and the, the mayor of the town, she's like, okay, let's execute him right yeah. now. And it's like, wow, alright, so everything is just completely shifted. And, I, I kind of wanted Rick to die in the last episode, and that would be some sort of signal that maybe there's a better way. Maybe the world can get back to normal. But no, apparently the world is just fucked, and everyone needs to keep fucking it up more. And that's the show. Um, I uh, I listened to a podcast recently where they broke down why Walking Dead doesn't make sense. Um, because if this shit actually happened... Communities would rebuild relatively quickly, not mm-hmm. not not that quickly. But if you just look at disasters all over the world, people kind of like come together more than they do loot. There's looting, yeah. but mostly it's like, oh shit, everything got fucked. Let's let's all work figure this shit out. That's what happens when tsunamis and shit happens, you know. Yeah, I mean, The Walking Dead is kind of a power fantasy, like all zombie media is. But I think. I- Part of it is just I'm attached to the characters. Like, as long as Glenn and Maggie are alive, I'm probably going to keep watching no matter how 
bad it gets because I just like them as characters. Also, uh, gay Topher Grace. I can't remember the character's name, but he looks like Topher Grace. And wait, wait, I like him. Wait, who? Oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I can't remember the character's name. He's cool. I want him to survive. So once all the characters I like are dead, I'll probably stop watching, but I'm, I'm stuck with it for now. <laughs> all right. Um, well, well it, I mean, it really is only a matter of time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I read this weird article on uh, Walking Dead recently about how unrealistic um, everyone's facial hair is on that show. <laughs> it's like hysterical. Some of it is like kind of interesting. some of it is kind of interesting. Where they uh, there's like this one scene where a uh, one of the women, Rosalita, she uh, she reaches she lifts up her arms and you see that she shaves her armpits and her legs uh, at some point. And the article said that wouldn't happen she would probably not keep up with that very quickly, you know? Is it, it... Are people so weirded out by hair on women that we have to have her all shaved? I was like, that's an interesting point. That says a lot about how uh, we uh, how everything needs to look on television and how women are uh, viewed as well. But then I started thinking about it even more, and it's like, none of the ha- hair makes any sense on that show. Because it's like, what's his name? Abraham, he has this, like, perfectly trimmed handlebar mustache, where he's like, he, he kind of must constantly shave it off screen, <laughs> like, all the time. Uh, Glenn has no facial hair ever. Um, there are so many char- so many male characters who just never have any facial hair. And but Rick always is sporting this gigantic like bush on his fucking face. <laughs> I think Leon, if you buy the DVD set, it comes with a disc full of deleted scenes. That's just them shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Rick walks into the room. Oh, Rick, would you like a razor? No. <laughs> I, deserve, I don't deserve one. <laughs> the world is too fucked up. Um. Okay. I, I. I. Let's. We have. We have like seven minutes. Uh. Let's talk about uh video game. <laughs> Leon, the there, weird thing. Yeah. Leon, the thing reminded me. Did you see that infographic? Someone broke down all the Fast and Furious movies into like how long they were fast and how long they were furious. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. Seen that. It was like Fast and the Furious Four was eighty percent fast and twenty percent furious. So Fast <laughs> Seven. Oh. It's like, we're, we're sorry about that. I was like, Fast 7 come, it just came out. Or is it Furious 7? I can't remember. But, but the, the seventh one came out. And I was like, you know, I've never watched any of these movies. Maybe, I heard they actually get good by the fourth one. So I, I got uh, Fast and Furious 1, and I pressed play, and literally five seconds later, I stopped. And I just, no. You know what? I don't, I don't know why I did this. And I watched the video drum instead. Um, yeah, they get, they get progressively better. The first two are just bad. Just bad. Okay. All right. Um, there's a video game piece of news. Let's talk about it for the remainder of the show. I want to hear Johnny voice. Johnny, you introduce this story. Um, all right. Very well. Uh, well, um, fighting games okay. are, are still a thing. I mean, I, you know, I, I know that sounds good. We have five minutes. Some... Hurry it up. All right. <laughs> fine. So Mortal Kombat 10 is out. And despite the fact that it's an absolute fucking disaster on PC which is hilarious in, like, a lot of ways. You should check it out. Uh, they've kind of come under fire uh, for selling easy fatalities. That's right. For the low, low price of four ninety nine, you can buy slightly less complicated fatalities for your characters. That's not like, consumable. It's not like look, it unlocked forever. Look, here's, here's the thing about that. It's just a game, and I shouldn't care because <laughs> I, sh- I, I, I honestly shouldn't care because um, if you know that, that's that's the way that it, this whole uh, downloadable content era has uh, has happened. You know, there, everything has been sort of handed to you, and I, I don't want to be like an old curmudgeonly guy and say you kids and all that. Um, because when I play fighting games, or when I used to play fighting games, I didn't want to play with another character, another player anyway. I wanted to play against the computer, because I like playing single player things. But back in the day, you know, again, I'm trying not to be an old man here, but back in the day, when you could pull off a fatality on someone in the arcade when you're fighting someone, that meant you were elite. And now everyone is just, is just buying, buying their, uh, their medals, I guess. Well, in in fairness, we don't know whether or not people are actually buying these. It see, I I I bet people will buy them. I bet I bet. Well, if the option is that there, makes me, that makes me sad though. 
That makes me that makes me really, really, really sad. It's kind of weird too because I mean the whole fun of the fatality is that you pulled it off. It's not that you get to watch it, and that doesn't make any sense in the internet age. If you want to watch you just fatality, watch it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I I don't I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. People can yeah. I always say like it's your money, so you can do whatever you want with it. You know, I'm I'm not gonna give you a hard time about it. But bear in mind, that money could be going towards probably buying a, another game, like a whole other game that you can play and enjoy. You can get pretty cheap games these days uh, if you know where to look. So how much is it for, for, for a, cheap, for a uh, quickie fatality or whatever? Well, this, the- this is the thing about them is, like, as I, under, as, as I understand it, I think they're, they're expendables. Is that right, Austin? Yeah, so they're you, consumable. Like, yeah, they're consumable. They're buy more. So, yeah, so you spend $5 and you get 30 easy fatalities. And then when you use those 30 easy fatalities, all your easy fatalities are up. Oh, my God, the candy crushed it. Oh, <laughs> I, did, I didn't realize. I thought, it, I thought you just buy it and it unlocks. Like, oh, that's, that's so much worse. Oh, gosh. Now, I, I, don't, I don't mean for the players. Again, it's your money. I just mean the company that says, oh, this would be a great idea. It is because it will probably make them a fair bit of money. But that's... That's unpleasant. That is an unpleasant, unpleasant term uh, turn in. Uh, I, I, I'm speechless. It's, the funny thing about it for me is, is the games are being blasted left, right, and center right now for having not microtransactions, but free to play style microtransactions. You know, like buying jewels in Dungeon Keeper or like buying power ups and fucking Candy Crush or something like that. Like, nobody has said that they're a fan of this. But people are still doing it. It makes money, so they're going to keep doing it, obviously. And I mean, this is, this is Warner Brothers, to be clear, the publisher of Mortal Kombat, and they are notoriously dickish about this kind of stuff. So, oh. I don't know. They, it, this is the future, guys. Uh, you're going to have to pay for. All your games, and then you have to keep paying if you want to keep playing them. It's only a matter of time until all games have a like stamina free to play mechanic. Sorry, I wonder. Nintendo. I wonder what Ed Boon thinks of this. I wonder. I wonder if he thinks this is like a brilliant idea, or if he's like me and he's just like you. Tell it is used to mean something. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably just in his ball pit of money, think, trying to dream up new fatalities. Oh. it's probably more along the lines that he's like, wait. What if a player lost at Mortal Kombat 10, and then we charged them something like 25 cents to a dollar for them to come back and play again? Oh. What if you could just put machines in places that would let you do that, and then you could just, like, line up in front of them, and then just feed money into them, and they'd let you mm-hmm. play? You know, I don't, you see I don't know. I don't know, Austin. That seems like too radical a future. <laughs> that, that seems like some science fiction shit right there. I like. I don't know if society would ever be able to embrace the idea of having a video game installation that people paid money to play. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean that's not even like the like the thing with the e- easy fatality is like I can ignore that. I want to play Mortal Kombat, but also you have to pre-order it if you want Goro, and then there's also a season pass on top of that if you want Predator and uh, Jason Voorhees. So. Mm. It's you, this game costs a lot of fucking money. Is my point. Um, even if you don't want to you know, cheat your way through the fatalities, so. but it's not even it's not even really cheating though, is it? Because by the time the fatalities come to, uh, guess what, asshole? You've already won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah not, that's, <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. It's like it's like buying confetti for for your your congrats. Ah, oh, damn it! You would have won this match, except you didn't pay me the two dollars that I asked for, and now by default, the guy that you would have beat wins. Oh, <coughs> sad. Okay, anything you guys want to say before we uh, take off? Um, are you guys watching Mad Men? Did you give up on Mad Men? I, I'm watching it, um, but I'm losing interest in it. But that's perfect because there's like two episodes left. I'm still in on Mad Men. I'm, I'm, I'm still on that. So. I, don't th- I don't think it's bad, but I think that it has run out of a lot of whatever it wanted to say. And I'm, yeah. I'm just kind of it's, – it's, it's not like a bad show now. It's just like, oh, almost everything that's happening now I've kind of seen before. They're, really? They're, you mean Don cheating on his wife is not a new plot twist for you? 
Yeah, Don meeting another woman and, like, trying to be nice to her, but then not. Um, maybe this time he will. Um, but I, I don't care anymore. I, he's, I, I wouldn't say he's an irredeemable character, but I, he, he's not even that interesting on the show anymore. Um, he doesn't have an arc. It's just a circle. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't, I don't know what the point of any of anything I'm watching is anymore. Oh, look, a woman touched Peggy, and maybe that woman is bisexual or something. Neat. Okay, but didn't some other woman touch Peggy and then, like, nothing happened again? <laughs> I just I'm keep watching it expecting to see something new, and I, yeah. I don't know. I, I, it's, it's like, oh, forget it. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I really, I really like the early stuff, especially the industry stuff. But for me, like the moment I knew that I was just gonna ride out the show, like kind of uh, begrudgingly, uh, was when someone got ran over with a lawnmower in the office. <laughs> I was like, that is the most contrived thing for like an office drama to, to do. <laughs> I, I just could not. I was like, okay, I'll sit it out, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be happy about it. Oh. All right. Uh. Johnny, anything you want to say before you go? Before we go? Um, I think Wednesday is probably the sexiest day of the week because you don't really know which way it's going to swing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm watching a documentary series on uh, Netflix uh, called The Story of Film and Odyssey. I uh, want everyone to watch this if you're interested in film because it, it is very informative. A lot of stuff I, I already knew but little bits and pieces of stuff I did not, and uh, really uh, enjoy. That's all oh. I have to say about that. Oh, I'm sorry. I do want to say one more thing. Uh, that I've been I've been watching I've been watching the new season of Community on Yahoo Screen. It's good. It's I like back, it. It's it's back to form. I mean, the last the last season that I had on on natural TV had its ups and downs. I thought it had some good points. I thought it had some low points, but I feel like it's it's back on track. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's good. All right, all right. We gotta go. Uh Damn, I wish I had something really funny to say before we had to, to play us out. But it's just, yeah, community is good. Um, fuck. Uh, someone, think a kid from a rose. someone think of a pun. Real quick. Hurry. What <laughs> happens when you drop a piano down a mine? What? A flat minor. <laughs> 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 <laughs>